Well, hallelujah. It's Wednesday, and I am delighted to be here at the well, and I am grateful that there are those of you who are faithful to join, and I'm glad that you are encouraged as you have shared. So please, uh, we are waiting for you to come on and for others to join you. Please tag a friend and say, join me at the well. Hallelujah. We are doing this virtually, and we are believing that as we do this virtually, it's, it's transcending uh, this location, and it's going, uh, whether it's to London or Antigua or, or, or Trinidad or, or Africa, um, we're going to believe that this word the Lord has for us will go to the ends of the earth. So please, let's have uh, some, some sharing here today, right? We don't want to keep good news to ourselves. We want to share, we want to be able to share uh, good news with those who need to hear it. Hello, my friend. Hello, my friend. God bless you. God bless you. You're a faithful one. There's a <laughs> yeah. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. God bless you, Sister Helen. Good to have you on. Good to have you on. Let someone, let somebody else know. You tag a friend, tag a couple of friends, and say, "Join me here at the well, virtual." And I, I know some of you who've been watching from other parts of the world are hoping one day to to come to the the well itself. It's it's a literal place. It's and so um, we trust that you would know there is a place provided for respite, for retreat, for refreshing, for refocusing, for recharging. And um, I can tell you, if you come here, you would leave having had a, an encounter with the Lord. God bless you, Kenja. God bless you, Shan. God bless each of you. Tag a friend and say, hey, join me at the well. Thank you, Lord. Father, we just thank you for today. We thank you for a new day. We thank you for what you have planned, what you have in store. We thank you that you determined before today, before this day came into effect, you already determined and planned what your will is for today. And so we call that into our lives. We call that into our spheres. We call that into our regions, into our territories, wherever you've assigned us in the geographic location where we are, we call the will of God. Thy will be done, thy kingdom come, or thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. So Lord, we speak heaven coming to earth today. We speak heaven kissing earth today. We speak the the, the colliding of destiny today. We, we call forth the will of the Father in our lives. Thank you, Lord. We give you praise and we give you thanks in Christ's name. All right. It is August uh, the 29th, and we're here at the well. And um, so many of you have stayed faithful in just being with me, and I thank God for that. Um, I want you to know, though, that September uh, is a significant month for me. It is my birth month. Yay! <laughs> I think it's the best month of the whole year. <laughs> anyway, um, on a serious note, and I think I'm serious with that too, but um, <laughs> uh, September, um, yay! Zanine and Alicia are also born in September. Wonderful! Um, I don't know, maybe just tagging them, Shannon, but I think Zanine is September as well. I think Audrey, no, you're not September, you're October, aren't you? But anyway, um, September is also the month when I was installed as pastor of, it was then Kissimmee Pentecostal Assembly, now Kingdom Life Center, and it's been 23 years going on 24. So I was installed as pastor in September. I was uh, uh, birthed in September, I launched my San Valentine Ministries in September. I launched my uh, uh, Freedom Conference in September. So September is, is always a month when I feel God is getting ready, me, getting ready to take me into more. And, and Shannon, your word are written in my, my, my journal for my graduation from Palm Beach Atlantic in 2014 was, 
there's more. I know that's your, your, your word, there's more. And so I'm on this verge of expectancy and hope and believing for more. And I want you to know that I'm pulling back some in September just so that I can refocus and recalibrate. So some new things will happen on Sanjay Valentine Ministries page come September. I will not be at the well because I'll be moving a little bit on vacation and we'll be out the country and so forth. But I want to stay connected and we'll do some new things and we'll relaunch our prayer time come October. So this is going to be our last time together for about a month or so. But watch this page. Watch this page for the new and the fresh thing that God wants to release through Sandra Valentine Ministries page. Thank you for your support and thank you for your prayers and thank you for being on the journey with me. Thank you, Jesus. All right, so what's today's word? Are you ready? Somebody say, I'm ready. <laughs> I'm ready too, because I need this word. And the word the Lord put in my heart for us today is a word concerning hope, You're right? And, and in Hebrew, in Hebrew, the word literally means expectation, expectation. So uh, uh, somebody else says, hope is the feeling that what is wanted can be had or that events will turn out for the best. Hope is when you believe that what you desire is within reach or is possible, all right? Hope is when you're, you're anticipating something and the anticipation down in your soul, in your spirit, you have a conviction and a persuasion that it shall be. Now, tell the truth. <laughs> Hope often is deferred. But somebody says, this is hope, H-O-P, here's the acronym, are you ready? Hold on promises, hold on to promises every day. So you and I need to know that in the midst of hope being deferred, we've got to hold on to what promises Father has spoken. You know, God can't lie, and that's my conviction. He cannot lie, he's truth, right? And so wh whatever he's spoken, I prefer to hold on like a bulldog and don't let go. I prefer to wrestle with what I know he has said and stand on that promise and believe that it will come to pass. I don't know when, <laughs> I don't know how, but I just believe he'll do it again. He'll do it again. And that's a conviction I believe God wants to awaken in each of us to hope. Hope somebody, somebody else has an acronym for hope and says, have only positive expectations. Hope, acronym, have only positive expectations. We've got to believe, according to Matthew 19, someone please, Matthew 19 and 26, please put that. With God, some things are possible. Ooh, all things, the Bible says. With God, all things are possible. With God, all things are possible. Oh my goodness. So, what is hope? I like this quote I found on, uh, on, on the internet. It says, hope dances in the poodles until the sun comes out again. Hope is when you're going to say, listen, I'm going, if I need to tread the waters, if I need to tie a knot, whatever I need to do, I will not cast away my hope and my conviction and my persuasion that the God that I'm trusting in will come through. Hallelujah. There is always hope and there's always something to hold on to. Somebody else says, hope is this, H-O-P, hold on, you, I like this, hold on, pain ends. <laughs> hold on, pain ends. Night seasons do not last forever. Troubles cannot last forever. Troubles have an expiration date on them. Hallelujah. And your miracle has a due date on it. So your, your trial, your adversity that you're going through, I know, I know, it's been long for some of us. 
It's been long for some of you. It's been like forever. And you're saying, when God, when, when will my morning break? My good friend, uh, uh, Karen uh, Wall has written a book, um, um, is morning coming? And she tells the different stories of, of just waiting for breakthrough. And yes, indeed, morning comes. According to Psalm 30 and 5, you can put that in, please. Psalm 30 and 5, weeping may endure for one night. And the thing is, one day to God is like a thousand years. So our one night, my God, may, may extend to six months, six years, 20 years, 15 years. But however long the night season is, morning comes. Hallelujah. Somebody who's watching, somebody who's watching now and somebody who's going to watch later, you need to know morning comes. Morning comes. Breakthrough comes. Deliverance comes. Healing comes. The reversal happens. The turnaround comes. You will laugh again, says the Lord. You will laugh again. You will dance again. Hope. Because it will change. Now, a verse inserted in the Bible. Hebrews, not sorry, Proverbs 13 and 12. Proverbs 13 and 12. Ah, hope deferred, hope deferred, good God Almighty. You know it's a deference, right? It's when it's put back. When you get your loan deferred, and we like those, you don't have to pay for the next six months or the next three months. But when your miracle gets deferred, when your promise, as it were, gets deferred, it, it, the Bible says it makes your heart sick. Listen to how the, the Passion Version puts it. When hope's dream seems to drag on and on, the delay can be depressing. Woo! Let me read that, that part again. When hope's dream seems to drag on and on, the delay can be depressing. But when at last your dream comes true, life's sweetness will satisfy your soul. Okay, God. Hope delayed, deferred, dragging on and on, literally makes one depressed. And I believe Many have become depressed or just have depressive moods and, and sad moods and they're heavy and, and, and can't even figure out why I'm so tired and fatigued. I have no push. I have no energy. I have no... Mm. Because somehow that which you have been hoping for and believing for and it just keeps dragging on and you hear sermons and you hear word and you hear prophecies and you hear exhortations don't lose your hope and you're like, God, give me some light. Give me some sign. Give me something, Lord, that you are with me and you have not forsaken me and I am not forgotten and that you are coming through with the promise. So, hope, when it's, when it's deferred, when it's delayed, can be depressing. But when the dream and the promise comes to pass, oh my gosh, it satisfies the soul. Does God want me depressed or does he want my soul satisfied? Does he want me laughing or does he want me sad? Come on, somebody. Does he want me heavy and weighty and down and fatigued and drained and frustrated? Or does he want me infused uh, with fresh hope and fresh life and fresh vigor? I believe the latter. So Lord, even today we look to you and we say, Lord, that deference that's on our promise, we ask that you would lift it today in the name of Jesus. Romans 4 and 18, Romans 4 and 18. Against all odds, when it looked hopeless, Abraham believed the promise and expected God to fulfill it. So here's the antidote for that depression. Here's the antidote for that sickness that you feel within where it's like, God, what's happening in my world? 
because hope is deferred. The antidote, hallelujah, is this. Abraham believed in God, in the promises of God, in who God says he is. He took God at his word. <laughs> he took God at his promises. And so as a result, Abraham became a father of many nations because that was the promise. I'm going to bless you. You're going to have a seed. And through your seed, the nations of the earth will be blessed. That was the promise. But do you know it was 25 years that he had to wait? Joseph waited 13 years. Ay, 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 ay. Mary had to wait nine months for the promise to be born. God's declaration over Abraham eventually came to pass. And I'm going to declare that you and I will have hope to believe that the promises spoken over us, there, ha there, there has been, there has been a word, there has been a word, a word, a word, specific word spoken over you. You wrote, you've written it down, you wrote it down, you journaled it. I feel like for somebody, it's, it's somewhere in the region of 15 to 20 years. It's, so, it's long. It's been a long wait for somebody. And you've had this word, and you, you almost are saying, I wonder if that was a word from the Lord. I, I wonder if I heard correctly. I wonder if it was just an emotional hype, because this wait is just too long. Abraham waited for 25 years. And that which he expected, hope is expectation, that which he anticipated eventually came to pass. Do you believe? Hebrews 19, 6 and 19, Hebrews 6 and 19, please put that, Hebrews 6 and 19. We who have run for our lives, very lives to God, have every reason to grab the promised hope with both hands and never let it go. Come on, saints of God, you who have trusted the Lord with your life, trusted the Lord with, with your future, run, we have, we, we, we've run up to God and with both hands, come on, with both hands, prophetically just put your hands up and grab a hold, come on. We have, hold, we have held on to the promise with both hands and never let go. It's an unbreakable spiritual lifeline. Ah, I'm going to dance on that one. It's an unbreakable spirit, spiritual life. Your hope is that. Reaching past all appearances, what you can see, right to the very presence of God where Jesus is. Uh, I hope you're getting this. You got to read it. Hebrews 9, 6 and 19, the message, the message version. Put that in, Sister Helen, the message version. Running on ahead of us has taken up his permanent post, that's Jesus, as high priest in order of miracles. Chizadek. The hope you have in Christ is an unbreakable spiritual lifeline. Don't give up. Don't give up. Brother, sister, do not give up. <laughs> Hear what verse 11 of the promised message says. I am sure that won't happen to you, friends. I have better things in mind for you. Salvation things. God doesn't miss anything. He knows perfectly well all the love you've shown him by helping needy Christians and that you keep at it. And now I want each of you to extend that same intensity toward a full bodied hope, full bodied hope and keep at it till the finish. Keep at it till the finish. Don't quit. You've had that dream to open a business, to be your own boss. You've had the dream to be an employer. Don't give up. <laughs> Bless you, Angela. Don't give up. I'm holding that dream. You prayed for me on Sunday, sis. I'm holding that dream. All right. Don't drag your feet. Be like those who stay the course with committed faith and then get everything promised to them. You see, if you give up, if you quit, then you might just do so on the verge of the promise fulfilled. You may just decide to throw in the towel just on the cusp of your breakthrough. Don't do it. Come on, don't do it. Don't do it. 
Don't quit. Hang in there. Hold on with both hands and believe that God will come through for you. Hebrews 10 and 35. So don't lose your bold, courageous faith. Don't lose it. For you are destined for a great reward. Your reward is sure. It is promised. God cannot lie. God cannot lie. He is truth. He's the embodiment of what's true. He's all truth, every part of him. And so if he has spoken, if he said it, he will do it. Just as the rain comes and does it what it's supposed to do and the snow comes, according to Isaiah 55, and does what it's supposed to do, God's word cannot go back and say, mm, I didn't get it done. No, no, no. It has to fulfill the assignment. God's word must fulfill the assignment. Hold on, brother. Hold on, sister. And this is my prayer for you. This is my prayer for us today. It is found in Romans 15 and 14. The message, sorry, the passion translation. Romans 15 and 14. My prayer for you today. Are you ready? Now, may God, the inspiration and fountain of hope. Woo! May God, the inspiration, the one who will inspire hope, infuse you with hope, reignite hope in you, reignite expectation and anticipation in you. May God, the inspiration and fountain of hope, who fill you to the overflowing with uncontainable joy and perfect peace as you trust in him. Now, is that possible in light of your situation, in light of your circumstance? Wow. Can God really come as the fountain, get the word picture, the fountain of hope and cause an overflow of uncontainable joy and perfect peace Woo, as you trust him. Lord, I declare that over my life and I declare it over my brother and over my sister. That, that you will come to us as the fountain of hope and that there will be an overflow. I'm ready. I'm making room, God. I'm getting rid of sadness and depression and hope deferred and frustration and anxiety. I'm getting rid of every negativity and I'm making room. Come on, you better declare that. I'm making room for the God and the fountain of hope that he is to come and overflow my life with uncontainable joy. <laughs> Woo! I'm going to laugh. You're going to laugh again. Uncontainable joy. Uncontainable joy. Uncontainable joy. Do you have a sense of what that is? Lord, you've cried so many tears. You've been sad for so long. You've been worried for so long. You've been anxious for so long. You wonder, will this ever change? Will there be a let up of this? I declare now is your time where God infuses you with life and hope and expectancy and your life begins to overflow with uncontainable joy. Woo! You better begin to laugh. You better begin to sing. You better begin to run. You better begin to jump. You better begin to shout because it's upon you now. It's upon you. It's upon you. It's flooding you right now like a waterfall uncontainable joy yeah 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 where there you've been sad he's turning it around he's turning your morning your morning into morning <laughs> he's turning your your sadness into joy yeah 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 he's 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 removing the depression and deliverance is now your portion my god something is happening to the people of god who's hearing this word and receiving this word your situation is about to be turned around Woo! i'm continuing romans 15 14 from the passion and may the power of the holy spirit continually surround you, your life, with superabundance until you radiate Woo! with hope. Did you get this? 
And may the power of the Holy Spirit, we need the Holy Ghost, man. We need the Holy Spirit. We need a fresh baptism of Holy Ghost. He comes and he brings joy. He comes and he brings peace. He comes and he brings guidance and direction for what you need. He comes and he infuses us with fresh life, lifting us up from the place of sadness and depression. May the Holy Ghost come and may he surround your life with super abundance. God, he's speaking super abundance over us today. Until you radiate with hope. Woo, shine, Jesus, shine. Until you light up with hope. Until you illuminate with hope. Come on. Come on. He's switching the lights on around you. Come on. The darkness must go. The darkness must be dispelled. Light, when it comes, I'm telling you, it drives darkness away. So I'm going to pray that the Lord illuminates you now with a revelation. Whether it's through this word or a word that you're going to hear shortly. You're going to be illuminated with hope, illuminated with insight and understanding what next to do, Lord, where next to go, what, what I've dried up all the resources, I've made all the phone calls I can make, I've knocked on the, all the doors I can knock on, Lord, what next? Hear the word of the Lord. I'm going to give you a new strategy. I am rerouting you, says the Lord. I am recalibrating your life, says God. And where you have lost signal for a season, where you didn't have satellite connection for a season, when you didn't know where you were going and you were moving in circles, now, says the Lord, I'm resetting that GPS of your life, God's path to success. And I'm causing you to know, says the Lord, this is the way, walk ye in it. Press in, my friend. Press into the voice. Press into the voice. Press into the word of the Lord because he will show you the way. He will guide you. Uh, 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 Psalm 32 and 8. He will guide you with his own eyes. He will direct your ways. He will show you what to do. You will not be left without a word. You will not be left without light. He is light. He is guidance. And he is the way. Hold on to your hope. Do not give up. Do not quit. Hold on to Christ, to God. Oh my goodness. Just before I came on, I heard my instrumental was playing and I heard the tune, Because He Lives, I Can Face Tomorrow. Because He Lives, because He Lives, all fears are gone. Because He Lives, because He Lives, because He Lives. God bless you. God bless you. Share the video. Like the video. God bless you. Encourage someone with this word. Hope again. Believe again. Trust again. The God of promise will not let you down. So I am on retreat for the next month from the well, from live broadcasting, but I will be on my page and something new is coming to San Giovanni Ministries. So look out. Oh my goodness, look out, it's coming, it's coming, it's coming. God bless you and see you on the page as we continue to engage on what God is saying. But pray for me as I listen myself for the fresh and new directives from Holy Spirit. Love you, thank you for your support, thank you, and God richly bless you.